So the main thing when it comes to naming ionic compounds or writing formulas for ionic compounds is to remember the basis of what an ionic bond is, right? It's when we have a metal and a nonmetal coming together and they're transferring electrons between each other in order to make two ions, right? We have a positive ion and we have a negative ion. And there's only one ratio they can come together at uh, in order for the positive ion to give up electrons to the negative ion so that they both take on their common ion charge. So what I mean by that is if sodium has one electron it wants to give up um, and oxygen ha wants to take on two electrons, <clears throat> then you need two sodiums for every one oxygen to make it work. So when we're writing formulas or writing names, there's only one correct ratio that the two ions can come together on. So because of that, unlike covalent compounds, there's no prefixes. And that's because uh, you know simply based on charge whether you're going to have one or two or three of that particular ion. So the main struggle for ionic compound naming and formula writing is that you need to determine how many of each ion you need in order for it to become neutral. Because we don't tell you how many. You need to mathematically figure it out. So in order to determine the ratio, you need to know the charge on each ion. The positive ion will be all the metals, so either you'll determine the charge based on its column, right? So column one is a plus one, column two is a plus two, um, or you'll determine its charge based on its Roman numeral. The charge on the anion, that negative ion, are for those columns at the end of the periodic table, so that negative three for column 15, negative two for 16, and negative one for 17, and those are the ion charges they take on in order to become neutral. Um, there are three transition metals that we need to memorize also because they are always the same. There's not more than one potential option. So you need to memorize aluminum is plus three, zinc is plus two, and silver is plus one. And if you look at your periodic table, it's kind of easy to figure to remember those three because they stair step down, three, two, one, kind of down the table. So again, in order to determine the ratio, you need to know their charges. Uh, for the columns where we know their charge, we just know them. So we know sodium is, plus, sodium is plus one, and we always know sodium is plus one. For metals where we don't know their charge, it will be given to us in their name using a Roman numeral. But for three transition metals, aluminum, zinc, and silver, it won't be given to us in the name, and you need to have those memorized. Plus three for aluminum, plus two for zinc, and plus one for silver. So as mentioned, in order to name the cation, if it's one that's under the staircase or those transition metals, you need to include a Roman numeral to indicate charge. So as part of the name, you don't just say its name, you also include its charge in a Roman numeral. So if its charge is plus one, you'd have the Roman numeral one. If charge of plus two, you'd have the Roman numeral two. Okay, the Roman numeral has nothing to do with how many you'll need in order to make the compound neutral. It solely has to do with uh, what the charge is on the substance. So if those two examples at the bottom of this screen, the iron oxide, right, in one case the iron oxide ratio is a one to one, in the other case the iron oxide ratio is a two to three, so if the world simply called it iron oxide, you couldn't generate the correct chemical formula for those. So we need to include the Roman numeral. In the first case, it would be iron two oxide. In the second case, it would be iron three oxide, given the charge on the iron. Now, don't forget that aluminum, zinc, and silver will not have a Roman numeral, and that's because they have uh, known charges. There's not a potential other option, right? So really, these Roman numerals are being included because you don't know their charges because there's more than one option. Copper can be a one or a two, and we have to show that with the Roman numeral, otherwise you don't know which copper is bonding to whatever you're bonding it to. Just to make sure everyone has the same exposure, uh, these are how you write the charges for one through four. So one, two, three, four. We won't see charges greater than four simply because of the octet rule still driving our bonding. So the biggest number of electrons something may give up would be four for the cation. So when it comes to taking a formula and writing the name for it from the formula, what you're going to do is you're going to take the beginning part, the cation, and you're just going to name it. And you're going to use the actual name that's on the periodic table, also including the Roman numeral if needed be. So if you have the sodium ion, it'd be sodium. If you have the aluminum ion, it'd be aluminum. 
But for these bottom two, if you had the iron plus two ion, you would name that iron two. And if you had the iron plus three ion, it would be iron three. So that would be how you write iron two, and this would be how you write iron three. So that's how you name the cation part of a binary ionic. When it comes to writing the nonmetal part, the anion part, we take the elemental name and we end it with IDE, just like we did for the second name in the binary um, molecular. Okay, so the chlorine ion is chloride, and the oxygen ion is oxide. So it's just the normal name with an IDE ending. So putting the name of the cation and the name of the anion together to name formulas, we have the sodium ion and the chloride ion, so just sodium chloride. We have the iron ion, but in this case it's the iron 2 ion because of chlorine's charge, so it'd be iron 2 chloride. This is also a 2 because of how the charges cancel, so it'd be the iron 2 oxide, and then this bottom one is aluminum chloride. Again, where I got these charges was the idea that the chlorine ion and the oxide ion both have charges on them, and how many irons bond tell us what the charge is on iron. So each chlorine has a minus one charge, which means I have a total of minus two on this substance, which means iron has to be plus two to make that work. If instead you were dealing with the FeCl3 uh, compound, now we still have a negative one on each chlorine, but I have a total of negative three on this time, which means that iron would have to be plus three and the name would change to become iron three chloride. That's the only change. Going the other way, if I give you a name and ask you to write a formula, the main thing to remember is that formulas are written in order to be neutral. You have to simply figure out at what ratio your two ions are coming together so that the number of positives present and the number of negatives present add up to zero. So for example, if we were dealing with this magnesium nitride example, Magnesium's common ion charge is plus two. Nitrogen's common ion charge is minus three. So in order to have the same number of positives and negatives in this case, we need to deal with that lowest common multiple of six. So I would need to have three magnesiums and two nitrogens to make the formula neutral, to make it so I have a plus six and a minus six to add up to be a total of zero. So taking these three name examples and trying to get them to a formula, generally what I do is I take the two names and I make them their uh, symbols right away. So I have the copper and I have the chlorine. And then over here I figure out what charges are on them. So copper has a plus two because that's what the Roman numeral is telling me. Chloride is always a minus one from the periodic table. So the ratio I would need these two to come together at to make it work is I would need two chlorines to have two minuses to balance out my two pluses. And I write that over here as a subscript. So aluminum is Al and iodide is I. Aluminum has a plus three, that's one I had to memorize, and iodine is a minus one. So again, I need three iodines to balance out with this plus three charge. And so I write that as a subscript. Silver is Ag, oxide is oxygen. Silver is a plus one, I had to memorize that. Oxide is a minus two. So I need two silvers to balance out with my one oxygen. One final example, this lead four oxide. Lead is Pv, that oxide is again oxygen. Lead has a plus four charge given to me in this Roman numeral. Oxide's minus two. So the ratio these two things come together at is I would need two oxides to get up to that plus four charge. That's it for your foundation of ionic naming. Go ahead and do the form and have a nice night.